Okay. So uh, let's get started. Uh, can you can you please confirm if you can see my screen? Any one of you? Yeah, we can see you. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we will discuss about uh, overview of ISES. What is Informatica Cloud? And we'll discuss about the components of Informatica Cloud. And you know, we'll discuss about IPaaS solution. What is IPaaS? What are the features of IPaaS? Uh, the cloud terminologies and the cloud architecture, uh, runtime environment and secure region, and how to get started. So to begin with, we need to uh, discuss about uh, what is the Informatica Cloud. Uh, so uh, students uh, from you know Informatica Power Center background or uh, you know who've got experience working on Informatica, uh, they have uh, some idea about uh, uh, this ETL tool, Informatica. So Informatica Cloud is an on-demand uh, subscription service that provides a complete platform for cloud integration and data management. So what it actually does is you know it is a uh, it's a leading uh, cloud integration tool uh, that is evolving right now. And it is built on a platform that to provide complete end-to-end -end data management solutions in a uniform and you know in non-centered approach. When I say you know uniform, it, it has an ability to connect to multiple uh, integrators or you know external applications, and it can bring in the data and it provides an ability to create and configure your connections, and you can create users. Uh, you can create and run your jobs, schedule them, and monitor them. So, what would be the components? The components uh, would include your uh, runtime environments, uh, Informatica Cloud Secure Agent, organization, and connections. So, we'll discuss about all this when we go to the component section. So, the first thing what we need to understand is what is IPaaS solution? So, IPaaS as a name. What is IPaaS? IPaaS stands for uh, Integration Platform as a Service. So it is a suite of uh, services that would enable your development, execution, and governance of your integration flows, connecting any combination of on-premises and cloud-based services, applications, and data within individual or across multiple organizations. So it has an ability to, uh, to integrate uh, data across on-premise and cloud-based. When I say on-premise, within the premises of the organization and even the cloud-based processes. So the best part of uh, IPaaS solution is you can access it from any machine with internet access and web browser. So when you access the Informatica a cloud application, your browser is connecting to the Informatica cloud services through a secure HTTP protocol. So typically, you know, the solution is having a centralized uh, monitoring capability and a toggle switch, uh, which you can toggle around multiple services and you can monitor, you can, you can trigger your jobs, you can monitor your jobs, you can do your uh, data integration, you can perform uh, the ETL process and there are uh, pre-configured integration templates for recurring business use cases. So that is all about IPaaS solution. Any any questions on IPaaS from anyone? Okay, so moving on. I would like to just give you a uh, high level overview, overview about you know the cloud terminologies that would, uh, you know, you keep get you keep getting to hear a lot. Uh, these are something like you know add-on connectors. You have an administrator, agent, assets, uh, bundles, components. You get a lot of cloud terminologies as part of the Informatica cloud. You get to hear a uh, lot of these uh, terminologies. Uh, but you know uh, I don't know how many of you are from Power Center background, but I will just uh, give a quick comparison with the things. So I'll just bring up a notepad and you know I'll just give a quick comparison from Power Center to uh, Informatica Cloud. So this is Informatica. 
out intelligent services. This is called IACS. And when we compare with an on premise uh, power center, in power center, what do you need? You need a we need a client. We also need a server, right? And in IACS, you have a UI, a browser that you have, right? It is a browser-based uh, interface. And you know, in Power Center, we have a domain. It is a main administrative unit, which would control your set of services. You know, it can be your repository service. It can be your integration service. Uh, it manages your security. And you have a grid, you have a node, you have everything in a domain. In IACS, we have something called organization. Or it's short form, it's called org. Okay. And similarly, uh, in Power Center, we have, you know, we, uh, we've been uh, working on workflows, right? And in, in IACS, we, we call them as task flows. And in Power Center, you have a session. In IACS, we have a mapping configuration task, or it is also called MCD. And in Power Center, you have a mapping. In IACS, you also have a mapping. Okay. So there are such uh, comparisons, you know, that would uh, eventually come up when you compare with an on-premise tool like Power Center. Uh, but Power Center is where uh, you may have to invoke something locally on your machine you know where you need to uh, install your client you need to install a server and you have your repository running on a database you have a repository running on a database but in iacs iacs uh, this is all managed by informatica cloud informatica cloud manages this and you know we have a org specific uh, secure agent which is managed by the client i'll tell you more about it you know when we discuss uh, in details i'm just giving you a high level comparison of uh, you know power center and iacs this is for someone who is from power center background and who joined this demo session right now okay so moving on IACS cloud architecture, you know, this is very important for all of you to understand how does the architecture will work. Now, if you look at this architecture, you know, this architecture uh, is having a user who would log into a machine uh, with an user ID and a password, you know, who has an identity access, to the web client, and he performs a design or administration function and the metadata, the metadata gets exchanged to Informatica Cloud uh, hosted multi-tenant repositories. If you look at this, the multi-tenant repositories are the repositories that are managed by Informatica vendor where it would store the metadata, the metadata of the, uh, you know, or the jobs that you have done and how do they get exchanged, you know, with, with a secure agent, a customer managed secure agent. And why do we need customer managed secure agent? Because the organizations would ensure the data is secured. You know, the data is secured and the data is lying or residing behind the organization firewall, right? Behind the firewall of an organization, you have a secure agent. So it is called customer managed secure agent. It can be on a Windows machine or it can be on a Linux machine. And the data, the metadata gets exchanged to Informatica Cloud uh, hosted repository, which is a multi-tenant repository, which is based on a microservices architecture. There are different services which are microservices architecture, and Informatica manages this, these repositories. Okay, so when you log in, you log into web client, you perform your design or your administration, and the metadata gets exchanged from the secure agent to the Informatica Cloud repositories. And if you look at the right side, even, you know, we also connect to external applications like uh, Salesforce or, you know, uh, Workday 
or you know Zora or any external applications which are called cloud apps and you know you have the business data even this business data is getting stored uh, using your Informatica managed cloud uh, runtime secure agent and process server there is something called secure agent and process server but this specific uh, training is about data integration so we're talking about data integration server i'll tell you about different services when we go to the ui and when we do a sample job so when it comes to the proxy you know you have a proxy and you have a sample provider to integrate your single sign-on ability in your organization you have an ability to integrate SAML uh, within your org or within your domain a domain is called an org in IECS so your on-premise data or your applications something uh, which are stored within your organization be it an Oracle instance or a SQL server instance right you have your data this can be stored uh, into the multi-tenant repository using a secure agent you know you are you're actually secure agent is an inbuilt integration service and also a kind of a communicator which stores the metadata or which sends the metadata and uh, you know it hosts into the repository the metadata gets transmitted to the repository multi-tenant repositories okay so any questions on this yeah hi Odin. it's me hello yeah 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 thanks for that one actually i joined a little bit late so actually i have some few questions actually so actually i am from mm. uh, mdm back mdm background actually okay so how mm. it is for me okay so because i'm from a different techn techn technology actually that's why means i am asking and my second mm -hmm. question is that it is totally api based technology or is there any customization is also required and if customization is required then on which base means it is a java based or what is that one the background okay yeah okay so this is for the benefit of everyone you know let me just uh, give a quick uh, update on this you know this specific course right is iacs cloud data integration you know what we're going to discuss is cloud data integration this is a four-week program you know it's a four-week uh, training program and this will help you this is what are the prerequisites to learn this program i'll tell you that now the prerequisites nothing in specific about you know nothing strong or nothing uh, kind of holding uh, prerequisites here you need to have Okay, you need to have good uh, basic SQL knowledge, okay, a basic SQL knowledge. And if you are if you are from power center background, right? If you are from power center background, then that's that's great. That's going to be really helpful for you. If you are not from power center background, even that even absolutely fine because this is this program is. I mean, this training program is designed in such a way that, you know, this is going to help you for cracking an interview and the content is created for even for uh, freshers, you know, so that they can pick it up. They can start learning the course and all you need to do is you just have to be, uh, you just have to get familiar with the tool. How does it work? You just have to get familiar with uh, the interface. How do you navigate through the interface? How do you work on different components? How do you work on different sources? How do you integrate uh, different applications? And this is not completely on API. This is not completely on API. Okay. So you can be rest assured. API would be covered in this training, but not completely. What 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 would be the basis is we'll be working on Oracle. Okay, we'll be working on Oracle, which is an on-premise uh, database. Right, that's my Oracle 19C, which is installed on my machine. Okay, that that's a prerequisite for you to make sure you have an Oracle instance up and running on your laptop, and you can even download this online also. You can actually uh, sign up to Oracle website and you can download the Oracle 19C website, sorry, 19C uh, database, and you can have it up and running, and you know some basic uh, basic understanding of you know uh, some basic understanding of uh, Unix commands, right? 
So since we are working on uh, Windows uh, right now, right? So you don't need uh, Unix commands at the moment, but it is good to learn them eventually as part of your uh, interview preparation. So this entire training is going to be is going to cater everyone because this training is designed, you know, for everyone from non power center background or even from a power center background so that, you know, they can they can crank the interview. That is the expectation I would like to set it up. Is that clear? Ah, yes. So it will not cover the customer 360 or the MDM part, right? No, no, no. This is only purely data integration, cloud data integration. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll tell you about the course content that I will be covering. Uh, so if you have anything specific to cloud architecture, uh, please let me know. I can discuss it right okay. there. Okay. okay. So anyone has any questions? Any more questions on architecture? So in this Hi, course, you'll be covering uh, uh, even only the yeah, on-prem well, or else on-prem to cloud as well? On-prem, on-prem, you know, we'll, I'll be covering on this uh, Oracle, uh, you know, what I'll be doing is I'll be covering Oracle uh, on-premise as well as uh, Salesforce. Salesforce and uh, the flat files. We'll be working on these three things. Okay. I guess someone else is asking. Yeah, hi, Arun. Yeah, uh, just my question is, uh, this is the course is going to be only on data integration partner. So what is the difference between the yeah. data integration and the application integration? Okay, uh, difference between data integration and application integration is, you know, uh, when you, you have something called uh, uh, which is synchronous and asynchronous. There is something called synchronous and asynchronous behavior. Okay, let me explain that. Okay. Now, what is synchronous versus asynchronous behavior? Okay. Uh, what is synchronous and asynchronous is synchronous is something which is Synchronous is something which is happening at the very same uh, very same time, you know, uh, same time, the same moment same time or same moment which is more like a real time or near to real time okay for example uh, for example uh, when you when you do a, a transaction you know a banking transaction right when you do a transaction you 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 log in uh, to a net banking site and you know you enter your user id and your password you get authenticated and you know you get uh, you get a go ahead to do the transactions and you you're able to navigate uh, to different uh, uh, different products of the banking site so that you can do your transactions now asynchronous behavior is not at a real time you know this is more at a batch mode right asynchronous is exactly opposite to not at the same moment so for example uh, you know you you are a team of a team of uh, 10 developers right and all your 10 developers are logged in to the IACS console. Okay, and you are working on a single mapping. Okay, you're working on a single mapping. And you know, you one of you are working on the source. Another one is working on target. Or target or any other transmission. Let's say uh, so one of your developer is working on an expression transmission. Or you know, uh, not exactly in a single mapping, but you, you may be working on multiple components of a mapping or a task or you know a workflow or a task flow, right? Now whatever changes that you do, right? The changes that you do over the uh, over the internet, over the cloud, you know, you the changes get reflected, the changes get saved within some fraction of seconds. So there is a difference. There is a difference between synchronous behavior and asynchronous behavior. So we are covering only the synchronous behavior, which is a data integration, which is a default behavior of data integration. Data integration works in a synchronous way where the changes wouldn't happen at the very same moment or within uh, within the same second, I can say within the same second or the nanosecond or the microsecond, 
but it would happen eventually. Whereas real time is you know, even that uh, seconds are not expected, right? The real time is more like a very close to real time or near to real time. That is an asynchronous behavior. So synchronous is a cloud application integration, which is more at the real time and asynchronous is the data integration. So we have two products here of IACs. In fact, not just two products, we have multiple products like, you know, CDI. CDI stands for cloud data integration and CAI stands for cloud application integration. Okay. Fine. Got it. Is that clear? Yes, hello. Thank you. So these Come are on. the only two <clears throat> microservices for IACS? Uh, no, not just uh, see these on uh, these are the products of IACS, not microservices. Microservices okay. is based on an architecture uh, point of view, which is hosted at Informatica Cloud. Okay, so moving on, like you know, we have uh, I just have a detailed explanation of the architecture that we covered in a different picture, right? You know, <clears throat> we have an Informatica Cloud services which is a repository which is holding the metadata, which stores the metadata of, uh, you know, the content that is being developed in the data integration. We have this ISCS repository and everything is happening over the internet. And you see that there are, are two bricks here, which is a firewall. And you have a machine with a web browser, internet access. You All you need is just a machine. You don't have to go download any kind of a client component like something like a binary where you install the binary on your laptop. You just have to uh, register yourself and you need to get going, you know, in real time in an enterprise license, you get access to the URL and you get going. That's it. But in a training environment, what we do is we actually enroll or we, uh, we sign up to a free trial account, a free trial account, and we'll continue with our training. So we perform the administration design, right everything using a ui i'll tell you that when we come there when we go there we'll discuss about it the secure agent is going to uh, communicate to the cloud and also to the cloud-based applications and platforms right your company is hold, hosting the security agent, which is controlled by your company so just a detailed uh, further detailed explanation on that uh, diagram a little more in detail about uh, you know salesforce or you know you see the business data the local files or databases that are stored within the organization and you have a machine with web browser internet access you perform design and administration okay so if i move on to the component side the components are informatica cloud hosting facility runtime environment and agent what are these components okay we'll discuss in detail now Runtime environments is something what we would need, you know, to to execute a job or to trigger a job. We need a runtime environment. So, in runtime environment is typically uh, it's a kind of a communication service or an in inbuilt integration service, which would trigger your job or which would ensure your source data is being loaded to target. Right? The cloud agents are responsible for running your tasks. There is something called task, and you know. Uh, that would ensure the runtime environment. We need to have a runtime environment to ensure we are able to communicate our job and load into the target. Now, what is an agent? Agent is something like your uh, a grid, you know, which would perform. Uh, you shall have multiple nodes. Uh, you know, in Power Center we have a grid concept, right, which can host multiple nodes. Similarly, an agent is a program which can run within your network and can. Uh, all the agents can be associated with the runtime environment. We'll discuss about that later. Okay, so what is Informatica Cloud Secure Agent? Now, a runtime environment that runs within your network is called a secure agent. And there is something called Informatica Cloud Hosted Agent and Informatica Cloud Secure Agent. Please don't get confused about it. Okay, the hosted agent means which is hosted by Informatica. We don't have control on that. 
that is hosted in Informatica site. Informatica managed cloud runtime environment or Informatica managed uh, cloud hosted agent, which is hosted at Informatica vendor, you know, that is going to control your data. But that is not the case. You know, if, if you want to run it, you need a special license for it. Typically, most of the organizations would prefer Informatica Cloud Secure Agent, which is within your network. Okay, is that clear? Is that clear? Understood? I don't want to rush. I want to take our questions. If you have, please ask me. So let's say if the secure agent is hosted on the cloud, that means the client data is visible to outside of the firewall? No, it won't be visible. As I've told you that uh, the client data, uh, the client data that is hosted within the uh, premises of the organization would get stored as a metadata, not as actually as a data. It, it gets stored as a metadata into Informatica Cloud Hosted Repository. Okay. It doesn't get stored with the actual data. Okay. In, in so you see there is an the encryption cases, here. Right? In either mm. the cases, like if it is hosted within the firewall or outside the firewall, then also mm. the data is not visible. Yeah, the data is not visible. But again, the Informatica Hosted, hosted Agent, if you go for that specific license, uh, that is a different... Uh, uh, different uh, set up altogether and then that that has a different uh, you know uh, it, it has got its own advantages and disadvantages too but generally most of the clients they go for secure agent within the organization within the firewall okay so moving on uh, on the ACS secure agent architecture, you know, how does that secure agent architecture would work? I've told you like, you know, when we have the microservices, you know, we have different services and the metadata, you have an encryption and the secure agent, uh, which is hosted behind your firewall is actually storing the metadata of your applications or your legacy databases. You know, the secure agent can be installed on your Windows machine or your Linux machine. and as a user, you log into web client, you perform your design, your administration, and you can also configure your SAML, which is a single sign-on. And you know, you can uh, perform this, uh, this data integration task, and the secure agent is going to actually uh, store the data, and it is getting, uh, the data gets transmitted to Informatica Cloud Hosted Repository in the form of metadata, the metadata gets stored, and including the cloud apps, like, you know, Workday, Marketo, AWS and all other cloud apps. So we also have a security model where the customer is connected to internet. You know, it's, it's, it's only the prerequisite for us is to ensure that you have internet connectivity. You just need to have an internet connectivity and you know, the data center infrastructure security would take care of that uh, security model with our inbuilt IACS platform security. And the best part of uh, ISCS is, you know, you we also have a role-based access controls. So we have different roles in the organization, you know, where uh, you would be having one or two admins, you'll be having multiple developers, and you'll be having a different role called service consumer. So what does an admin do? Admin uh, performs more or less all the functionalities, you know, you, you can have all the functionalities of security configuration, task, task flows. You have API based executions, monitor the job results. <clears throat> Whereas a designer can do like task and task flows and processes, API based executions. You can view the results. Service consumer is a, a typical role for API based executions and job based results. So this is a role based access control. I'm just giving you a high level, high level overview about uh, identities, roles, and assets. Okay, so any questions from anyone on all these things that are covered so far? Before I move on. Okay, if no questions, uh, so let's see how do we get started. How to get started with uh, Informatica Cloud Intelligent uh, 
services, I mean, uh, intelligent uh, cloud services, we need to, uh, to get started, right? So what you need to do is you need to download a free trial account. How do you download a free trial account? You just have to go to Google, right? This is my uh, interface, which is my interface, which I have downloaded my uh, Informatica Cloud free trial account, and I got this interface. So how do you get it? You just have to type Informatica Cloud Data Integration Free Trial. Go to the website, click on free 30 day trial. Because this training program is for, is for uh, four weeks, which is from Monday to Friday five days a week and we would be completing this in four weeks you just have to provide your details here okay with your names and you know just your uh, your details like your let's say you're a developer you don't do not provide your work email you provide your uh, email id do not check this box because the reason is if you check this box you can't use it after 30 days the same mail id can be used multiple times when you want to practice you know this interface uh, this tool you can use the same mail id but you just have to do not check this box and you can again select your uh, role again your phone number just a random number organization you can just put something randomly and you know you can provide your country okay so before you do this you need to provide a username right what is the username you need to provide Let's say you need to provide uh, something like, you know, dev, dev1 or dev2 or, you know, anything or IAC is, IAC is dev user. Test. Whatever name that you want to put, you can just put that username, but just remember that. Select your country. Okay. Select your country and your provision, your city and your pin code, right? And just, uh, just uh, sign up to this, click on start your free trial. Is that clear and understood by everyone? Any questions? So when you click on start your free trial, you get a mail asking to confirm your free trial account. Okay. So I'll just show you. So you get a free trial account from admin at informaticacloud.com, right? You get admin at informaticacloud. You get a mail something like you know admin at informatica cloud.com you get a uh, mail saying please activate your account so you get a mail like this please verify me now and you need to make sure you save this username and your login URL okay please store this information in a notepad keep it handy so that you have the user uh, login URL and the username fine so once you uh, verify this you'll be getting URL like this okay you just have to make sure you change your password log into the URL so when you log into the URL you get different services as part of your free trial account. You know, we get data integration, we get administrator, we get monitor, and we can also get operational insights. Okay. And if I see, if I just select on show all services, I'd be getting data quality and governance cloud. And I'll speak also getting integration cloud, right? You get integration cloud and data quality and governance cloud. But this course is specific to data integration, right? So we'll be getting these services enabled as part of my free trial account. So just right click on this, open your administrator service. This is an administrator service. And the first thing what you need to do is you need to download your secure agent. So how do you download your secure agent? This is your organization, which is called org. For every org, there will be an org ID, which is tagged to that uh, specific company okay now when you uh, when you go to the administrative service right you go to runtime environments 
and you see something called download secure agent okay if you click on download secure agent you get you get two platforms here to download one is windows 64 or linux 64 make sure you copy this copy the secure agent install token put it in a notepad okay and download the secure agent since i've already downloaded i'm not doing it again just download it and you need to do the installation which i'll be telling you uh, i'll help you out with the installation steps once you install it you have a secure agent that is installed which is mine uh, typically this is going to take your host name which is your windows laptop uh, host name so what i did is i renamed that uh, name to local agent web i also renamed the agent group which is my local agent web group okay so if i click on this secure agent i'll be getting uh, different services the agent would be having different services tagged to it they're called common integration components mass ingestion data integration server oi data collector okay oi stands for operational insights that is uh, for the dashboard purpose you know to get your statistics that is called operational insights but data integration server is important for us and the common integration components we can disable the other ones which are not needed because we won't be covering mass ingestion here mass ingestion is a different service so what we need is we need the data integration service to be up and running until unless these services are up and running your secure agent won't go to status as up and running okay the most important thing is your secure agent is a self-upgrading agent you know your agent is a self-upgrading agent and you know it uh, when you install your secure agent what happens is this is going to download the necessary packages it is going to download all the necessary packages for example if i go to my uh, last page when i had my uh, secure agent installed right If I go to my last page when I installed my secure agent way back, if you look at this, it is opening all the necessary ports. It would download the packages that are required. And you know, it is ensuring your platform is up and running. You don't have to worry about any uh, ODBC configurations or you don't have to worry about any uh, anything that are required for your secure agent to be up and running. Okay, this will download the necessary packages for you all the packages would get downloaded right so that uh, you are good to start with your work but the only thing is you need to make sure once they're all downloaded it will take some time for this agent to be up and running once your agent is up and running you are good to start with your data integration so where is your data integration you click on the data integration this is the interface where you do the development work is that clear to everyone uh, how do you download secure agent how do you set up the services mm -hmm. any any questions from anyone on this and okay. what is the request sorry yeah one at a time please yeah yeah, yeah so support yeah. yeah suppose multiple multiple user are working in the same environment mm -hmm. So what is the mm -hmm. repository or how the work will be happen and how the deployment will be happen into the upper environment? Yeah, and see deployments are a different uh, different uh, scenarios, right? And defla deployments, I'll tell you about deployments. That's not a problem at all. That, that isn't a problem at all because this is nothing like, a, you know, you, it's not a case of a power center, you know, you someone has kept the mapping open and uh, someone has to close the mapping to do the development, right? And this is not a lock you know that is happening because you can log into this <coughs> interface as i told you right is asynchronous behavior what is this it's like an asynchronous behavior where you know you you have a team of developers working on the same ui and the same ui is shared across multiple users and they'll be working on this mapping at the same time they can collaborate they can collaborate and they can do it as long as they have the access to this ui okay the users in the administrative service we provide you know users and the respective user groups and also the respective uh, roles tagged to the groups we assign oh, them that the specific user hmm. 
yeah actually actually i am from mdm background means i worked in the java technology so that's why means from that part i am actually asking so suppose in my every every developer is working individual machine so not like that mm -hmm. one so everyone have to work in the same environment yeah everyone can collaborate and they can do the work right they can they can create mappings <coughs> they can create mappings no. you know they can uh, run the workflows hmm. No, my question is actually not that one. My question is that everyone have to work into the same environment or they can work individual their environment and after that they can push their code into collaborate their code and after that one they can deploy it. That is my question. Actually. There is nothing on pushing the code here. Okay, let me clarify that. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, let me complete the ma mapping and okay. tell you. I'll just create a sample mapping. Okay, it will give you a clear idea about, you know, what to be done. See. I'm a user. Okay, I'm a user and I, I click on new that we, we call them as assets in IACS. Okay, we have assets here with tasks, mappings, maplets, task flows and components. Okay, when I go to mappings, when I click on create a mapping, right, I just click on create mapping. I have an Oracle 19C installed on my machine, right. So this is called a mapping canvas. This is called a mapping canvas, you know, where I do my design, you know, I can, I can create a mapping. So I just have to uh, give a name as M underscore employees. For example, I'm, I'm loading my employees data into my target directly, right? So I go to my source. There is the moment I created a mapping, I got a default shape of my source and target automatically I got source and target okay so if I go to my source right since I already have some connections created you know you need to actually uh, ensure you have your connections created in advance so I have some connections created which are my Oracle connections on my Flagpile connections and Salesforce okay I don't have Salesforce here but I created so this is a free trial account which I had already uh, uh, enabled my free trial uh, sometime back which is about to expire in few days that is fine but I just for the demo sake you know I'm just showing you the connections how did I get my connection for example if I go to my connection Oracle and RC, this is my schema name okay this is my schema name I have my Oracle connection here and this connection uh, I created this connection with the required uh, you know the prerequisites what i need is i need a user id and a, and a password the local host and the port number with my servicing okay i created this and i uh, am able to import my uh, sources okay i have a connection created without a connection you can't work on uh, this interface so this is called a mapping canvas and this is a design and this is called a transformation palette okay where you can just drag and drop it fine so the source that I have here is uh, the first thing is when I just click on open space I'm uh, creating the mapping name I click on save okay the mapping is invalid because we have not completed the sources and target set so first thing what I need to do is I need to go to my source maximize this is called maximize and minimize window so I go to maximize go to my source select my connection which is my let's say if I select my uh, InfiSRC connection now I get different types called the single object, multiple objects, query and parameter. Okay. Let's say if I select my single object, which is my default uh, source type every time I go to select my ISES interface is talking to my Oracle instance and getting all my sources. See, it established a connection. It is going to import on. I don't have to import it manually every time. They're all stored in the connection itself. Okay, and I can select the employee table, click on OK, and I can even preview the data. Okay, so what I need to do, let's say if I want to preview the data, I can even do a preview data here. Uh, once it imports that object, you can preview the data. Now when I click on preview data, so this is going to give you give me the uh, top 10 rows, you know, maybe the first 10 rows of the table, the price table, and it is going to give you that uh, 
whatever you see in the database instance, for example, if I just do a select start from file say. Okay, I get this, I get this, uh, you know, record count here, employee ID and all that, right? So, you get the preview data here with the employee ID, you know, you get all the data here. This is called preview. Now, the fields will get automatically populated from the table that you've imported. Now, let's say if I want to load this data into my target, right? I go to my target. Uh, select the same connection click on select now i get two options here either i can choose an existing target or i can create a new at runtime let's say if i select create new at runtime i'll just give the name as tgt underscore employees okay. and save this now now my mapping is valid Okay, my mapping is valid right now. I just have a source and target. I didn't do anything. Now in the in IACS, you know, we have we also have the monitor service. Okay, as part of toggle switch, right? You can toggle around data integration, you can toggle around the administrator, and you also have monitor. You just have to right click on it, open it in a new page. Okay, and the monitor page is uh, the service is where you can you want to see all the jobs that are running, including all jobs okay running jobs and all jobs you see so if i go back to my data integration my mapping is completed right so what i did is i have configured my source i configured my target and i saved it so i have an i have an option to run a standalone mapping this is called a standalone mapping right i just click on run go to my uh, i get a prompt here before i you know if i run this i get a prompt to choose my secure agent because this is a manual way of doing it. I'm selecting my local agent FEP group here because that's my runtime environment. Click on run. Now, if I go to my jobs, I can see the job that is running here in my, my jobs. And if I go to monitor, you'll see this is running here. So here you see this, the status is starting. There will be different status that is uh, seen here. The first status that you see here is starting status. Then it will go to queued status. And from queued, it will go to running status. You get a prompt like updates available, which means that there is something updated. Now it is running. Okay, it says it, say, it says it's running. If you click on the instance name, right? For every run, you have an instance appended to this, like hyphen one, instance ID is one. You get the status of your who has started this start time end time is in a star which means that it is still running click on refresh you get an updated status with success rows okay you got 30 rows success so if you just go back here select start from uh, tgt underscore employees you will see the same data again okay got it so this is a standalone mapping that i have run so what happens is uh, we typically create a mapping task as well so how do you create a mapping task there are two ways to create a mapping task either you click on new task create a mapping task or you just copy the mapping name click on the three dots here click on new mapping task but why do we need a mapping task? Because mapping task has an added uh, feature of having a multiple set of instructions that you want to pass to the mapping. You can also have a schedule tab, which will have multiple things that you can instruct your mapping to do to perform. Like, you know, what to do, I'll, I'll cover that schedule in the part of training. But, you know, if I go to the next step, next step, I have a schedule tab where I want to run on a schedule or email notification pre-processing, post-processing, uh, parameter files, advanced session properties, which we will discuss later. If I click on finish, this is a task that I created. It's, it's similar to a session, but 
Every time if I do some changes in the mapping, I don't have to refresh my mapping task. Automatically they are get they get updated. So I just have to run this. But before I run it, okay, my mapping is already created, right? So what I need to do now? Sorry, my target is already created, which is my TGD underscore employees. Okay. If I copy the same mapping, same target again. Now I go to existing target now because the target got created. How do you know it? You just search for it, you get the target name. Click on OK. Now in this mapping, I have taken an existing target, right? I've taken an existing target. Now we get target fields because previously we didn't get target fields because they are automatically created. Now if I go to field mapping, there is something called field mapping where you get options where automatic, manually, completely parameterized, partially parameterized. So I selected automatic is the default option. Automatically it mapped based on the chronological order of the column names. So I'll just click on save. I've, I've not done anything. You know, that's an automatic way, automatic behavior. You understood? But the data already existing in that. If I want to truncate it, I can go to target and click on truncate target, click on save. So the mapping is saved, okay, but I'm not going to run the mapping. What I'm going to do, I'm going to the, my home page, which is my, uh, you know, a dashboard where I can pick up my recent assets. I go to my mapping configuration task, which I created. I'm not doing anything changes here. Automatically, those changes get reflected here. I'm going to run this. Click on run. Go to my jobs or go to monitor. You'll see one more instance will be starting now. Okay. This is a mapping task we just started now. You can't cl uh, click on this until unless it goes to running status. Now I can click on this. Okay. The moment it has gone to running status, I can click on that instance to see the statistics of my uh, job. Okay, we got 30 back again. So all of you understood this. Uh, this is a simple mapping what I have just created for the demo purpose to give you an uh, understanding how does it work in IACS. Yeah, yeah. hi all. Uh, actually, I have two questions here. So my first question mm -hmm. is that suppose you loaded the 30 records, right? But suppose in the mm -hmm. 10th number record, there is some error and it is not able to load. So the 29, uh, so it will load up to that one or it will load, it will omit that record and after that it will continue the loading. See, erroneous records, erroneous behavior, uh, that's a different uh, different requirement. Mm -hmm. See, this is only for uh, showing you how does it work. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, you, you're asking things uh, in advance right now, but uh, we will check that later at later point of time. This is only for... Okay making aware everyone how does a mapping would work you know in iacs like how do you want your end to end thing that's it okay okay and erroneous that, records oh, oh. in the hand thing that's a different way yeah okay and my next question is that uh, first you ch means mm -hmm. created the source and the target and at that time you created the target table and secondly mm -hmm. you change that <coughs> change that one to the you uh, in the first time you created a new target table and in the second mm -hmm. time you change that to the existing but in the upper environment how can I do that? Means I have to change that one also in the upper environment, like fraud or pre fraud, like that one, or how, how it will be? Because no, no, I see, this is a this is this is a training environment. You know, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Let me be frank with you. We don't create any existing targets. Sorry, we don't create any new targets, or we don't create. Uh, we don't, you know, uh, do anything on our own. We will will rely on uh, table creation, right? We will get the tables imported. Okay, we'll okay. get the tables okay. imported. This is only a training environment, you know, where you have an ability to create an existing, uh, you, you have an ability to import an existing target. Also, you have an ability to create a new target. Okay, because it is creating a target on the source columns and it will, uh, if you look at the, you know, my previous instance, you know, what I've run, right? Let me open this mapping, which we, uh, one second, not this one. Arun, can you also use any one transformation? Yeah, yeah, we can use a transformation, right? 
for example so you are uh, here you think only source and target right in between yeah, uh, just, just, yeah correct you just drag and drop it and put it in between you can do this uh see okay. so it's only a demo purpose i don't want to rush the rush up things for example i want to do expression i can drag okay. and drop an expression between here if i want to do undo this i can do undo so that it go back to the uh, original state if i want to redo i can have a redo add transformation so if you look at this there are dots here right the dots are appearing you click on the dots you can even select from this also so this is not an enterprise license it's a free trial account the free trial account will have a limited functionality for the transformations that are available so if i select expression i get selection here and then i click on the grid here arrange all i get arrange all again okay, okay. so let me give you uh, an understanding about uh, the day wise topics that would be covered here so the day zero, you know, the today's date, you know, what uh, as part of the demo session, we covered, uh, you know, what is cloud and what is architecture. And, you know, we uh, just had a brief understanding about a sample job. The detailed topics that will be covered in the four weeks of training are as below. So the day one will be the installation guidance. I'll be providing the installation guidance for all the students, you know, who, would, uh, who need some help on configuring services, starting up the services and all that, right? And help uh, everyone and creating the necessary connections for free flat files, Oracle, Salesforce. And we'll run some mappings and tasks, you know, for the below scenarios uh, for day one. See, uh, these are the planned activities, but you know, it's not necessarily that, you know, we'll be completing all those activities on the specific day itself, depending on the time, depending on the questions that we get from different uh, you know, uh, from all students, it might get overlapped for the next day. But I'm just giving you the planned activities for the day where I'll be covering this flat file scenarios, you know, sources. Uh, we have a, a like, you know, SQL database, the database loads, and also, you know, configuring, uh, synchronizing expression. We have something called uh, day three joiner, aggregator, normalizer. Day four is again these things. And day five shade sequences, sequence and data. Week two, we'll discuss about mapping parameters and variables and you know expression macros. And day three, we'll discuss about synchronization tasks, replication tasks, hierarchy parser, hierarchy builder. And you know, week three we'll start with workflows and sorry, task flows. I don't have to say, I'm not supposed to say workflows because it's only task flows in ISCs, not workflows. So task flows, we'll discuss about linear task flows, uh, task flows, the parallel tasks, and the scenarios around that. And also we'll cover REST V2 connector, uh, scenarios on REST V2 connector, web services. And week four, the last week, we're going to discuss about REST API, Swagger files, activity log, executing a job, intelligent structured model, partitioning, error handling, uh, and you know uh, that also includes uh, you know push on optimization. What optimization that push on? And day four we'll discuss about ISCS administration. Uh, so day five is uh, which I kept uh, blank because there will be overlapping you know from my week one. I it wouldn't be exactly the topics that would be covered. You know sometimes we might get delayed, which will be carried forward to the next day. So anyone has got any questions on the topics that will be covered in this four weeks of training? Uh, yeah, actually I have. So what will be the timing? Means any specific timing? Timing, uh, I mean, you may have to reach out to the organizer. Uh, it depends on the common uh, timing, you know, that we are getting from maximum students. You know, it can be the morning time or in the night time. Okay, morning time before, uh, I would prefer before, uh, something like 7 to 8 a.m. or 8 to 9 a.m. Uh, that should be better to me or after 9 p.m. in the night. Whatever that works for majority of the students. Ah, uh, yes, I have to go to the office and yeah. Hmm. That's correct. So uh, it depends on the majority, uh, you know, please reach out to the organizer. Uh, please drop in your email IDs and your contact numbers and they'll get in touch with you. And once we start with the training, you know, we can decide upon the uh, timing match. Okay. So, uh, sir, I have a question. Like, uh, after this mm. course, will we be uh, 
knowledgeable sufficient to attend the i mean to pass the certification of iacs to pass the certification of iacs you know you would need uh, you would need more practice but you know i wouldn't uh, say 100% uh, that you know the training uh, that is required for you is is more to uh, you know cracking an interview but again you know you need to do a lot of practice and scenarios because certifications would be more in a scenario based questions right you need to practice a lot so i have a set i have the set of interview questions which i can pass it on to you and you need to practice it so this training is focused on uh, like you know where you you are expected uh, to learn a lot and you know this is sufficient uh, for you to easily crack the interview because i'm going to cover uh, up to you know some advanced uh, topics also as per what i what i have seen in my experience and definitely you know we can we can help you out on this okay but i don't so I at don't least care. so yeah well, at really? least like uh, will you be able to provide the practice material so that uh, we can practice on our own yeah yeah i can give you some practice scenarios you know we have uh, you know i had uh, some batches you know where i have given some practice scenarios some of the students where you know they had to do some kind of uh, practice things i'll i'll give you that that should be fine you know for your practice but first learn learn the tool understand the basics understand how to navigate to different services understand all the transformations and you know if you are if you're not from parts in the background even that is absolutely fine but you just have to learn how to go about uh, learning this tool and you know get uh, successful in data integration that that's enough you know you learn, you'll be learning about salesforce you'll be learning about uh, you know uh, oracle uh, databases and you know uh, platforms also okay arun uh, so a small, a small question so how is the market yeah. for uh, uh, informatica there are multiple etl tools outside right like data stage azure aws so how is the market for informatica right now yeah so market for informatica is always uh, i say you know always green because informatica even though we have lot of etl tools in the market right so as per gartner right informatica is a leading data integration platform and you know the cloud uh, the cloud specific uh, requirements have gone like anything i mean they the requirements of uh, increased like anything because of uh, power center to cloud migrations because everything is moving into cloud uh, shortly maybe in one to two years we would expect all the power on premise projects to move to cloud so informatica is always a leader in the etl you know we we have talent you know we have other etl tools too but yes i don't think you know they are uh, anywhere nearby to informatica informatica is a leading data integration tool in the market so when you have something leading in the market job is always green jobs are always green and the market is always uh, green you yeah. end up on running yeah i mean you have a lot of demand actually okay sure okay yeah okay thank you all for joining this uh, demo session i hope you had a nice session and uh, looking forward to meet you all yeah thank you bye